Here we are in the streets of Verona. You don't believe me? What, you think it's Bologna? Oh no, I think I got Corona. <laughs> oh, right here is a uh, uh, well. This is kind of off the beaten path a little bit. A romantic spot. Mwah. They say if you throw some money down there, you'll be a little bit poorer, <laughs> but your heart will be stronger. Let's see what we got. Might have a penny or two. <laughs> One cent? No, you gotta throw a two at least. Make sure everything's working. Keep the brush on my bristly ass face against the microphone. So we're in Verona. We're in Italy. One of the best food countries in the world, I'd say. I think most people would say that. Italians certainly would. Oh man, it's gonna be busy out there and I'm gonna have to look like an idiot talking to a camera. So let's just stop for one second and just discuss what we're doing here. Why did we come to Italy? Because there was a cheap flight. What do we plan to do in Italy? Eat. Eat. So today we're gonna just go around and try some food. We already had the best pizza we've ever had maybe. That was in the first like 10 minutes of being in Italy. <laughs> that looks like a million bucks. Can I eat it now? You can eat it now. Um, and what else do we have? We had some lasagna yesterday, some eggplant parmesan. Oh, that looks really good, sir. I got this lasagna, kind of a cream sauce. Looks really good. How's that? Yep. Of course, Verona is known for Romeo and Juliet. Just give me a, a Shakespeare quote there. Romeo, Romeo, where for art thou Romeo? <laughs> Yeah, that's one. We did walk by Juliet's balcony yesterday. All right, there she is. I really feel like they dropped the ball. Juliet and Romeo, they kind of like, why are you killing yourself? And then finding out that she's not dead. And I was like, and then you're like the read kill, it's like a double kill. It's like, they really mess that up. That's a blooper of the ages. There she is, there's Juliet. Hi, oh, Juliet. Oh, you're supposed to touch her breasts. You wanna go up there and like... Start fondling her? Now we're here for the foods and today is our last day in Verona. So we have a bunch of stuff we need to eat. We're gonna do what we can and we're gonna do it right now. Okay, where are we going? Left of here. Y'all don't know people like this. 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 Man, there are a lot of people here. Verona is a very much a uh, tourist town. Uh, it's one of the best preserved old towns in Italy. As you can see right here, they have their own little Colosseum smaller version of what you'd find in Rome. This street here is the pedestrian shopping street. You're going to find shops like this one here, Louis Vuitton. There's Prada, all the fancy brands. Everyone who's walking around is carrying like Louis Vuitton bags, coach bags, leather coats. Their shoes are designer. Like, how are these people making their money? They're not even at work. It's 12.17 on a Thursday. Now look at that old bridge. <laughs> it really is incredible how much beauty there is in the streets of Morona. It's just everywhere, every little side street. It's just breathtaking. Yesterday we walked up to the castle and the view from up there is just incredible. I highly recommend it. You just look out across the city and you're like, what the hell? It's a bit much.
This is, I would say this is the main square, Piazza del Erbe. And it's called that because they sold spices here. But it is quite beautiful and you can just see the towers everywhere. Tower over here, and there's a tower over there. Put your hands in the air, shake your derriere. People were shackled to that thing at one time. Jeez. And then just a short walk. So Plaza Plaza Urbe there. And you come over here and there's another big square within a, a whole other a lot of beauty. Oldest cafe in Verona. Cafe with Dante. And right here is a statue of Dante, who of course is the writer of Dante's Inferno, famous poet. Oh, an ambulance. Somebody ate too much pasta. This way. This is the lineup to go see Julia's Balcony, which is in this building. It's in the courtyard of this building. So with all this beauty comes all these tourists, comes high prices. I am finding the restaurants in the city are expensive, Maybe it's just all of Italy. Yeah, we are used to Cambodian prices, which are incredibly low, especially for a quick bowl of noodles or whatever. But uh, it's hard to spend over 10 euros per meal, you know, for two meals a day. It's, it's a lot compared to my, what, $10 a day in Cambodia I was doing. So being the itchy feet on the cheap that we are, we like to hunt for deals. And that's why we're crossing the bridge over into the less tourist part of town to go for lunch, save a bit of money, just walk in a little bit further out of the tourist area. So nobody really comes out here as far as tourism goes, but you can see it's still incredibly beautiful. These buildings, just so old and classic. I'd say that's uh, at least $2 cheaper than the rest of the places. I'd say closer to $5 cheaper than the places right in the downtown area. And it's supposed to be good. It's old, traditional. A lot of locals probably come here. Let's do it. So that didn't work out. We uh, went in there and she asked if we had a reservation. We don't have a reservation. It's Thursday at 1 o'clock and they're asking for reservations. That's uh, part of the Italian dining experience, I suppose. So I do not know what we're gonna eat now. Found a spot, cute little alley. Okay, so we have to go inside to order. This is a cool spot though, let's have a look. Oops, it's a push situation. <laughs> Yeah, so they'll mix up a lot of that stuff. Let's get through here. Let's see. Okay, order has been placed. It was a bit complicated. This is Aperol with the spritzer, spritz Aperol. You see this a lot in Italy. It's a delicious drink. Restaurants are kind of complicated in Italy and obviously the language barrier limits us. But if you look at a normal menu, it'll say Antipasti. It's usually fresh, maybe some cold cuts and bread and stuff like that. And then you have your Primi Piatti. I don't know how you translate it exactly, but it's like first plate, first course or something. And that is usually pasta, non-meat dishes mostly. And then you have Secondi Piatti. And that is more of a meat dish. They'll have some other categories too, but it's a little bit intimidating because these things are like 12 euros for the first plate, 15 euros for the second plate. Wow, that's like, I don't really want to order 30 euros worth of food every time I go out for a meal, but you don't really have to. It's more of like the traditional style. If you're going out for a big meal with your family on a special occasion, maybe you might do it, but you're not always ordering the first plate, second plate. But I do find the portions are 
kind of like small if you're just ordering the pasta. It's not a ton of food and it's often without meat or, you know, a combination of stuff. Bon appetit! Let's see. This place does stuff a little differently though. So they have a counter up there that has a bunch of pre-made food and you can get a mixed plate, which is what we did. Most places don't really do the mixed plate. I haven't seen it on a menu at least, other than this place, maybe one other place, but um, usually you'd go and select what you want. And they, yeah, they put it all on a plate, but you pay for each one separately. But they had a lot of good options there. We got some octopus and some kind of tomato sauce with peas. I don't remember what this is. It says cheese and it's fried and it's, that's boiled pork, kind of like a sausage. We got some cabbage with cheese and butter probably. This is bacalao which is like a dry salted cod. Yeah, it's served with the polenta. The polenta is like solid, kind of jellied almost. They do polenta here in the north a lot and it's usually like that or it's like kind of like soupier. Hey, I remember the first time we had polenta was in Spain. Yeah. So this looks like polenta. 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 Hey, you didn't cheers me. I was sitting there waiting to go and cheers. So I don't know how many of those items we were supposed to select. He was just like, oh, we got some room on the plate over here. You want something else? Like, yeah, we'll take that. He's like, oh, okay, you want anything else? Uh, no, I think that's good. It's like, uh, yeah, I'll eat everything. I'll eat everything you have if you keep letting me choose. Oh yeah, baby, that's the thumbnail. Okay, that meal is in the gut. And I just want to show you guys the receipt. So the total cost was 21 euros and that is 350 for the drinks, 350 each, and then the plate was 12. And then there's this other thing, it's called coperto, I want to say. Coperto. And that is basically a cover. So majority of restaurants in Italy, there's a fee to sit there. You can say it's a service charge, I suppose, but they charge you to sit at a table. Some places you'll find people just like going in and just standing, standing at a bar or whatever, and just shoving some food in their mouth. That's because they don't want to have to pay that, that fee, I suppose. So 21 euros for that meal was, I mean, pretty good. That's the best deal we've, we've found in these here parts. However, the cheapest meal I believe you're gonna get in Italy happens to be pizza, which is amazing. <laughs> One of the best foods ever. And Italy obviously does it better than anybody else. It's pizza time. We're at Vincenzo, who is busy in the back making up our pizza. A ton of different types, all that. And you choose what kind you want, round, long one, and just a slice. But there's so many different types of pizza around Italy that it's hard to decide which is the best, who makes the best, what style do you like. This particular style doesn't actually use yeast in the dough. Are you talking to me? I'm talking, I'm pretending like I'm talking to you so I don't look like a psychopath. Zaza uh, is going in the oven. 230 degrees Celsius this oven is. How long does it take to cook one? Seven minutes. Look at this beautiful gate. This, this thing was built in, uh, I can't remember, it's like five. <laughs> the year 5 11, 11 yeah 11 bc something like that so much old shit in italy so cool another great way to eat cheap in italy is to go to a grocery store because everything is much cheaper than in restaurants uh like obviously but i mean like a lot cheaper you know like that delicious meat. They have tons of good sliced meat. We got here the first day and just went to a store and just stocked up on all kinds of stuff. And uh, we've been doing at least one or two meals a day, two meals a day at the Airbnb we rented. I got all that pasta. 
That's good stuff. That's like fresh pasta. It's not dried. And uh, it's 99 cents for all that. Like tortellinis, raviolis. It's so simple to just like cook some of that up. It takes three minutes to boil it. And then you throw some tomato sauce on it. And they have tons of good tomato sauce. The wine is ridiculously cheap. 11%. This is not just like non-alcoholic wine or something. It's not grape juice. What kind of wine is it though? I don't know. What kind of wine are you? Wine is corked, decorked, uncorked. And I just want to do a quick tour of this Airbnb. Or I think we booked it on booking.com, but um, it's a person's apartment. And it's very simple, quite Italian. It's nice, it's a great location. Hey, there's me. That's the square. Don't remember how much we pay for this place. Tiny little kitchen. It's always good to have though, because we can make things like coffee, save a bit of money, stock up on some food. Bathroom, complete with a bidet and a messy bedroom. What did we get? Tell me, tell the audience. Speck. What'd you call me? Speck ham, a type of ham, Italian ham that's cured and I don't know, it's delicious. It's kind of like eating human flesh a little bit. Mushrooms. I like. Mushrooms have been amazing in Italy. You mm. Gotta love the mushrooms here. I love mushrooms everywhere. And Not I love that there's a variety. You don't like Asian mushrooms? Oh, I Asian do like mushrooms. mushrooms. I do. I do. Oh, I do. Well, why don't you like that movie? Eggplant, which might be the yellow eggplant. I've seen a yellow eggplant around. That looks like a yellow eggplant, right? Mm -hmm. And some cheese talad, talagio? Tele, tele, talagio. Tele, talagio. 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 Well, to say it like that, that's probably right. Talagio. This type of cheese is actually specific to this area, Lombardy. It's the province we're in, named after the valley, Talagio, on the edge of the Alps. The cheese has a bit of a stanky funk to it, kind of semi-soft, but it melts. It's almost like a brie. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take two because I only two pieces. Oh, Did anybody crust. else nervous about that wine glass around her? The crust. Yeah, that's so good. That's so raven. Mm. Before I wanna buy myself, I don't wanna hang around y'all. Good health, one day I'm really gon' ball. Fuck around and buy the whole mall. Breaking that cake, flexing 700 in the bank. Not a superhero, I'm safe. Look at my face, look at my grace. Don't match up, no love.